Hi, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a baby name for a nursery using wooden letters from the craft store. What you'll need are the following. Mod Podge and a brush. You're also going to need some, a color paint of your choosing. Hot glue gun. An assortment of different things to add to the letters. Scrap of paper. And of course, the wooden letters with, that spell out the baby's name. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do is grab your scrap of paper. I'm using different color scrap of paper, but that's just my choice. You guys can use all the same. And you're going to grab your wooden letters and take off the stickers or anything that they used to hang the sticker with. I left the little staple on the letter because it doesn't really matter. They're not, it wasn't sticking out too much or anything, so it wouldn't affect it when you put it flush up against the wall. But that's completely up to you and what you want to do. The first step in doing this is tracing out the letter. So you want to make sure to flip your paper over because you want to have the pretty side or the part with the pattern on it on top of the letter. And you also want to make sure that you're putting the letter on the correct way. If you put it on this way, it's going to be backwards. So you're going to end up having the backwards letter, if that makes sense. So you want to make sure that you're putting the letter the correct way. And you want to make sure to trace it as close to the actual letter, the wooden piece that you're using as possible, just so that way there's not too much extra paper and it just kind of saves you a little bit of time later on. The next step is cutting it out. What I would do is if you're doing more than one letter is I would trace all of them together and kind of do it, you know, one step at a time. But since I'm showing you in the video, I'm going to be showing you different letters and different things that I'm doing with each letter. But that's just a suggestion. And then you want to go ahead and cut all your pieces out. You want to try to get as close to the trace that you originally did as possible, again, because it's going to save you some time later on. Um, when it comes to like middle pieces like D's or P's or O's or something, you can just figure out a different way of cutting it so it makes it easier. I just cut down the middle and then four um, cuts outside and that makes it easier for me just to cut the little shape out. Now the process is the same no matter what letter you're using. I'm just showing you different letters as I go. But what you want to do is paint all of your wooden letters a certain color, white, black, pink, purple, whatever color it is that you, you know, that goes with the decoration of the room that you're going to put these in. One little quick tip before I keep going is I would suggest tracing all the letters in the name first, then painting them. And while they're drying, you would go ahead and cut all the traces out if you're doing this all in one sitting. I did mine in multiple sittings just because the baby's name was so long, but it's completely up to you on how you want to do that. And I also didn't paint the back side of the ladder just because it's going to be up against the walls, flush, you know, nobody's going to see it, kind of like a waste of time and a waste of paint. I also had to do multiple, I had to do two layers actually of paint just because the paint that I used was kind of light as you can tell from the clips on the video. But if you buy, you know, true white or deep white, I forget how it, they say it on the actual bottle, you only have to do one coat. The way I dried mine was I just put two dowels down. And I just let them dry like that. That way the actual paint, because sometimes if you paint on the edges, it gets stuck to whatever you're laying them on. And then it messes it up. It pulls the, um, the paint. So this way it kind of avoids that. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and grab your Mod Podge and your brush. And you want to grab your cutout and your letter. This is a super easy step. And you want to do the same step for all of them. And you, can, you don't have to use a brush. You can also use a foam brush if you prefer those. Those are cheaper. But I find that those you have to throw them out after a little bit. But with the brush, I have to do is clean it off and it's ready to go for the next project. Now with the Mod Podge, you want to make sure to put an even layer. And I would suggest a thin layer. Because you, you're going to put Mod Podge over it again once you lay the paper down just to seal it all together. So a thin, even layer is all you need. I make sure to go around the edges just a little bit just to make sure that the paper is actually sticks and you're not going to get like a little lift on the side. You're going to want to do this step fairly quickly just because you don't want it to dry on one end and not the other. And you also want to make sure that when you're placing your paper on here, you're kind of placing one end first and then the other. You don't want to place it 
you know, off or not center correctly and then it sticks and you have to rip it up or you have to trace it again. It just adds more steps. So if you do it carefully the first time, it could avoid, you know, you wasting time later on. You're also going to see that there's going to be some bubbles and some of those bubbles you can pretty much air out. Um, but if you can't air them all out, don't worry about it. When you put the second layer of Mod Podge over top of the paper, um, it should go ahead and blind out. The second step, I believe, is the sanding of the sides. And I just do this because no matter how close you cut, sometimes it's going to be off on one side, then more off on one side than the other. And sometimes, too, the letter itself is going to have, it's not going to be smooth all the way around. So you can just vary with a very thin um, sandpaper, very light grid sandpaper, just go ahead and sand it down. With the paper, I would suggest going down like I'm showing you right here against it because this kind of cuts the paper and makes it kind of like a, kind of tears it up, but tears it up clean if that makes sense. I just want to make sure to go all the way around and um, try to get it as close as possible. And if you, you know, you can get it pretty, pretty close and it'll look perfect. Once you've sanded down all the letters, you want to go ahead and grab a wet um, paper towel and just kind of pass it through to get any dust off or any extra paper off. And this makes it have like a clean surface again. The next step is to seal in the scrapbook paper to the letter and you're going to use your Mod Podge and you want to do a pretty thick layer, I would say. On this end, with this one, you definitely want to make sure that you're going around the edges so the paper doesn't lift later on. So make sure that it's really, really stuck onto the wooden letter. And it's also going to make it look cleaner and more even. And I also suggest going the same direction with your brush just because, well, if, it depends on what kind of Mod Podge you use because there's different kinds. I just use the matte one and I don't ever have a problem with it showing afters, afterwards. But if I've heard that the gloss one does kind of show like your brush strokes sometimes on it so it just depends on what you're using just try to be careful and go all in one direction and you want to go ahead and let that dry overnight now as you can see this one I want to show you is all bubbled and you can see it really it's very prominent on the letter that's just when it's wet as soon as it dries it turns smooth and you don't see anything and it looks like it was always part of the letter now move on to my favorite part is decorating the letters and of course you don't have to if you like it just with the scrapbook paper then that's fine. You can just you know leave it and put it up on the wall and it looks beautiful. But I always like to add a little something extra to the letters. Um, this is for a friend of mine I'm making it for her baby shower and I'm using um, I'm going to decorate actually all the baby's names and she does have a really long name the baby's name is around nine letters long. but. You know, that was my choice and it's completely up to you on what you want to do. But I just found this little flower at my local craft store. It was like a hairpin and I just took the little hair part of it out from the back. I bought little gemstones that I found at the dollar section of this particular craft store. And I just put it in the middle and I decided that I was going to put, you know, the little flower on this letter. And this happens to be the middle letter, but the baby has multiple A's in her name. So, I mean, the mom could pick and choose which way she wants, you know, which letter she wants where. Another thing you can do is just buy little um, ribbon, different ribbon. And I also found this in the dollar section of my local craft store. And you're going to do the same thing. And you can do multiple things. I'm going to show you, you know, different examples. And with this one, I'm just going to have, I'm just going to put the ribbon down the center of it. And I'm going to add some other things later on to it. But if the baby's name, um, is long like I like you know this particular one is I just kind of use the same type of decor on multiple letters just trying to change it up slightly but you also want the letters to look like they're part of you know that they're all part of a unit like the name you don't want to do comp too different of things on each letter because then it kind of looks a little awkward in my opinion but if that's what you're going for then that's perfect go ahead and do all of them different it you know this is something that's like most of my DIYs that I do it could be custom, custom tailored to whatever it is that you want it to be.
It also looks really nice if you just leave it like this, if you have a few of them with not so much details on them. So this is perfectly fine. If this is what you like, you can use thicker ribbon. You can use brighter colors. It all depends on what you want it to look like. I decided to add something to it. I just had some extra craft stuff laying around. These are little flowers, they're paper flowers. And I just layered them and you can buy them at any local craft store. And then I just put, I believe they're called Oh, I'm not sure what they're called. I can't think of the name right now. I'll, I'll put a little disclaimer on here when I think of the name. Um, and you just kind of put them together. And they have they come in different colors, different patterns. You can get um, shapes too. You don't, I mean, they sell flowers a lot. I've seen them a lot of places. But you can get you know them pretty much any craft store. And like I said, I did a lot of the letters the same. I try to keep like a certain pattern to the um, decor of the, each letter. Um, there's going to be another one, I think, coming up where I put multiple little flowers on them. Just because I didn't know, I kind of ran out of ideas. The baby's name was really long. But as soon as I found these little flowers in my craft bin, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with them. These little flowers are crocheted flowers. I think I got them at an expo a few years ago. So I'm not sure if you'll be able to find those exact ones. But you can find a lot of different stuff at your craft store in the dollar bin section. That would be great for this kind of project. See, like for this one, I stacked multiple um, flowers and I did different sizes and different color patterns just to kind of make the letter pop out a little bit more. Another thing is that if you're using hot glue or any kind of glue, really, you have to decide beforehand where you want to place all the different little extras on the letters just because you can rip the paper or you can like tear the first layer off which has the pattern on it and then it'll just you know it's a issue because it's kind of hard to take the original paper off of it to put a new paper on and the letters aren't cheap they're around three four dollars each however if you have a joann's around you or a michael's they do use their coupons, and what you can do is you can buy a few letters at a time, work on those letters, and then go back and buy the rest of the letters, and you can save yourself a little bit of money that way. For this next letter, I decided to use two ribbons and some leftover little crocheted flowers that I had. What I've noticed is that a lot of the stuff that I use for my crafts are leftovers from other projects. Like, these were left over from a scrapbook that I had made. This white ribbon was left over from my DIY baby white travel case, which I can link down below if you guys are interested. So don't ever throw anything away that you don't use in a project. Even if it's like a little piece of something, you can always add that to something else that you're going to make in the future. Now for this particular letter, I'm going to use two ribbons like I said previously. So I'm, I need to make sure that I have enough room to put both ribbons plus the little flowers. If the baby name or, you know, your kid's name, if you're putting this in like in an older toddler or an older child's room, if they have multiples of the same letter, I suggest doing them the same. For this particular name, the baby's name started with an A and it actually had an A right in the middle. So I just did one of them different, like, like I showed previously with the big white flower. That way the parents can kind of choose if they want to do, you know, have the big white flower at the beginning of the name in the middle of the name. It's completely up to them on how they want to arrange each letters but I find that it's easier for the person making it or even if you're making it for yourself and it kind of makes it look more uniform too if the same letters are very similar they don't have to be exactly the same you can kind of tweak it here and there but if they're very similar it makes it look better it looks nicer up on the wall when it's all put together I didn't show you the whole baby name or you know the whole name out with all the letters and everything just because 
and I feel like it's a friend of mine, and I'm not sure if she would want, you know, even though you guys probably don't know who she is, but just out of, like, common courtesy, I want I felt like I shouldn't put the picture, the name of the baby on here, the full name or the full letters, but I pretty much showed you all the letters that I did, if I did them any different, and I don't know where, what happened to the clip of where I cut the white ribbon just because that one's thicker and if you wrap it around like I did with the silver one it's gonna make it not make the letter flush up against the wall all I did was I just cut it really close to the end of the letter of the top part and then I kind of burned the edges a little bit so it doesn't come apart and you have to do that really quickly and very lightly you don't want to burn the actual wood letter or burn too much of the white but um it pretty pretty basic on how to do it it's not too hard or you don't even have to use as thick of ribbon as I did if you don't feel comfortable doing that however I really really hope you guys enjoy this video it is a lot of fun you can make it super creative if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask and don't forget to comment rate and subscribe and I hope to see you guys soon thanks so much for watching